The passage of time from our conscious beginnings in this wave of existence is not known. We are the descendants of survivors on a global setting and our cultural separation spans the ages. Time after time, our kind have forced human existence back from the brink of extinction. And in doing so, culture explodes and religion emerges. From the ashes of the gods, we have continued to live, but the traumatic inflictions in our catastrophic timelines has altered the way we think. Trauma from the cataclysms witnessed by our kind inflicts trauma, and we should never underestimate the damage being done to the ways we remember. Wait till you hear this. The discovery of the past is sensational. Here we are, confronted by a time and earth cycle that is separated from our own time. We are a people overwhelmed by the influence of the godlike activity in the Squatterman event, yet still we try to connect this time to the last. The people of antiquity knew of the event, their thoughts are assimilated from their ancestors' times living out the cataclysms in the caves. When Kronos to the Greeks, Vishnu to the Hindus or Ra to the Egyptians manifested away from the stable light that it once was. When Earth's people witnessed the gods of the solar system exchange plasma. But they described this over time in a way where it became believed that these were physical gods. The ancient Greeks are famed for their description of the gods. It's all a manifestation of course, but Greek culture utterly explodes around the religious pantheons and mighty empires emerge from the fear of the gods being angered again. This establishes control and seats empires with rulers who are seemingly keeping the gods appeased and directly representing them here on earth. And this must have been implemented by people who knew the truth, only now being picked at in the Thunderbolts and Squatterman projects. Delphi, Greece, 1894. Archaeologists and workers pose in front of the magnificent statue of Antinous, which was unearthed near the Temple of Apollo at the Sanctuary of Delphi. The statue was discovered by a team of French archaeologists who in 1891 were granted permission by the Greek government to excavate at Delphi. In the summer of 1894, the team unearthed the exquisite statue of Antinous, which had been commissioned by the Emperor Hadrian in 130 AD. Antinous was a young Greek who became the beloved companion of the Roman Emperor Hadrian, but who later died under mysterious circumstances along the River Nile. Greatly dismayed by the death of Antinous, Hadrian, who was an admirer and passionate supporter of the classical Greek period, as well as a benefactor of the Oracle at Delphi, ordered that statues of the young man who he'd loved so passionately to be erected in all sanctuaries and cities of his vast empire. He additionally ordered the institution and establishment of athletic games in honour of Antinous, who was then honoured and worshipped as a god. A statue of Antinous was erected at the sanctuary of Delphi after his death in 130 AD, and it is universally recognised as one of the most beautiful and impressive cult statues of all time. During the excavations, the statue was discovered upright on its pedestal, next to the wall of a brick chamber alongside the Holy Temple. From the Roman coins minted to honour Antinous, we are informed that the representation of the statue was accompanied by the epithet, Propelius. So it's legitimate to assume that the statue was originally placed at the entrance to the sanctuary. Later on it suffered damages and it was broken to the height of the knee, so it was moved to the Temple of Apollo, where it was later found during excavations in relatively good condition and today the statue is on display at the Archaeological Museum of Delphi. Archaeologists believe that the Antinous long hair was once crowned by a wreath, since there are indications of a band with leaves made of different materials, and the statue exemplifies the evolution of ancient sculpture. Its melancholy beauty, the graceful angle of the head and the high polish of the marble surface embody the spirit of the Roman Imperial Age when there was a tendency to revive ancient Greek ideals. But what do you guys think about this one anyway? Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.